Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex here with Freedom Mowers. Hope you all are doing well. We have a pressure washer here on the bench today. It's a Husqvarna PW3100. Has the Briggs & Stratton EXI875. My neighbor actually brought this over. They bought it at a estate sale and got it home. Said that they wanted me to look it over. They had no idea when the last time it was ran. Does look like it's been sitting in a garage for a little while. It's pretty dusty, but uh, overall it's in like mint condition. I kind of looked over it a little bit. Even the O-ring uh, where your water hose attaches looks like it might have been used like once or twice. So I think that this unit has very minimal use on it. All of the original equipment and hoses and everything are still on it. They had the owner's manual. Um, they brought it over. I turned the switch on. I checked the fuel. It had a full tank of fresh gas. Um, and I probably pulled it about 20 times. And I could not get it to start. It has the auto choke on this. So it should just crank right up. So my guess is it's probably just going to be a fuel issue on here, but we are going to dive into it and see. So let me get y'all set up. All right. One of the other things I wanted to note too is I did check the oil on it. Might be a little off on the stick right now because I had tipped it, but oil was full and clean. Got my spark checker. So I'll just go ahead and test just to make sure that we are at least getting spark from the coil to the plug and then we're going to pop that plug out and make sure that we're getting spark at the plug too so switches on oh yeah yeah, we got a good spark there. So then we're going to take this loose. We'll just touch it to uh, probably the muffler on here just to make sure. It's definitely ran before, but the plug looks nice and clean. It's not wet, so we're not flooded out. Hopefully y'all can see that. Oh yeah, got a nice blue spark there. So we are good. Coil and plug. I'll just go ahead and thread this back in. This is the way I like to do it. I'll show y'all here in just a sec. I normally just take the whole top cover off. It's only three bolts. And then when we go to take the carburetor off, I can pull the gas tank as well at the same time and take it off as one unit. It just makes it easier so I'm not spilling fuel everywhere. So I think I got to get a socket to get on there. But what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and set this down on the ground because it is a little awkward for me to work this high up. But we'll, we'll get the plug all set up, but let me get some sockets, get this on the ground, and we'll move on here with this carburetor. Alright, so on this one we've just got three 5 sixteenths on the top. And then our whole top shroud should come off. And that gives us now you can see so when I go to pull the carburetor off kind of have to shimmy this a little bit but the tank will lift right up out of these slots I am gonna have to be careful of the on off switch here um, they normally don't have these on the mowers but this is the same as a lot of the push mowers and now we can go ahead I'll get y'all down so we can see the air box and start getting this carb off. I'm just gonna take the air cleaner cover off. Filter looks to be in good shape. 
maybe had a little backfire at some point a little oily in there so we should have I believe that the two five sixteen I haven't even taken one of these apart in a while so I'm trying to remember I believe that these black ones here are five sixteenth there should be two of them if I can get in here with it those two right there and then uh, the other one here I believe is a 930 seconds then so now we've got our cover that's coming off we'll go ahead and disconnect the electrical wires we've got actually we might be able to just take this whole button out and just leave all that intact all right so we'll leave the button on there that piece comes right off and yeah should be pretty much good right there to start pulling everything off as far as the carburetor it's definitely oily um let me see if i can slide the tank up hopefully y'all can see all this so i have slid the tank up now the carburetor, i got to kind of break that loose. It's got a gasket and an O-ring. And then we will take the rod off that goes to the auto choke on the muffler. And then the actual throttle right there. And now... We have the whole carburetor and tank assembly off and then I'm just gonna go ahead and move this out of the way and we'll get right into this carb all right I've got everything just kind of set here on the floor on a couple of shop towels I like to do it this way that way I can just pull the tank off and I can lean it back and I don't have to worry about fuel spilling everywhere and I can also drain some of the fuel out of here to get a fuel sample make sure we don't have any uh, water in here because these fuel hoses on these are pretty difficult to get loose on the machine so uh, I can just have it tilted back now we have almost a full tank and I'm not leaking because I'm able to hold it up so I'm gonna set this off to the side for now and we'll get right into this carb all right so we should have the same 930 seconds on the bottom of the bowl here drop those two out flathead try to get in I'm gonna try to get in one of these little ears here on the bottom don't want to get crazy and pry too hard but you just got to get under it just a little bit and then you'll see I'm just trying to show y'all exactly where it's at but just kind of wedging in here and then you can see I've already got it cracked loose because now it's leaking and then we've got the bowl drop right out and I I've got a glare so I can't see but there's definitely some particles in there let me see if I can show y'all uh, let me see if I can get out from the glare I don't know if you guys can see those little kind of particulates in there and I can't tell if there's water at the bottom of that or not I'm gonna put that into a cup and take a look but I'll set that off to the side for a sec and then we can go ahead and take loose the float just give it just a little just a little push up there that come out pin comes out needle comes out we're gonna go between the the black housing here and that lip just to go right in there and you kind of just teeter-totter your uh, flathead and that will break the seal on the jet housing here and then that whole piece will come out all right so this screwdriver I got is a little more thin so there we go just had to get underneath of it just enough to to break that seal on that o-ring but 
take a look at this jet here. It appears that our jet is clogged because I cannot see through that. Yeah, I think we're just clogged up on there, but you can go ahead and take these all the way apart as well. Just wiggle it. And then you have the whole jet apart. You can basically uh, run a little pick through all of the ports on here. Make sure those are clean. Make sure that end of the jet is clean. Blow it all off with compressed air. Just make sure all these parts are clean. And then you can go through, blow compressed air through everything in here just to make sure it's all clean. I think it's just going to be that one little spot on this one with the main jet. So let me grab let, let me grab my cleaning tools and we'll get this tidied up. Gonna see if maybe I can get that little chunk to fall out so you guys can see. But yeah, that main jet was completely blocked up. There's a little there's a little chunk way up here, but now the hole is nice and opened up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and just make sure that I've got everything clean. I'm just gonna blow the compressed air, like I said, through all of this, and then we'll start reassembling. I think that was all it was gonna be on this one. I've gone ahead and got all this cleaned and blown out. Um, to just put this back together, you just wanna snap that back in. You'll feel it click. Um, just reverse exactly what we did when took it apart. Just put the needle on there, make sure that that's all clean. The <clears throat> our little holder here, we can actually put right into the float and then snap it in. So now that's good. Make sure that's open and closing. You want to make sure that your float when it reaches the bottom is parallel. This one looks good. Uh, this carb was in really good shape, so I think it was just a little bit of crud had got to the bottom. I am going to go ahead and clean out the bowl here, get all that tidied up. I'm going to get this bolted back together. I'm going to take a fuel sample. I'll show you guys what comes out of the tank, and then we can go ahead and just put everything back on the unit. I think we're going to have a good runner here. All right, well, I took a fuel sample. Uh, everything looks nice and clean in there. The fuel looks very fresh. I didn't see any debris. There was also no moisture in there. I have the carburetor all back together and we're just going to go ahead and put it back on the machine. I'm going to go ahead and mount the tank back on the carburetor and I'll put it all back together as one piece. Just reverse order on those linkages. Now the only thing I am going to say is do not torque these screws that are going on here. Two of them are going into plastic and you can easily strip them or warp the uh, the housing and then you'll really be in trouble. Also another thing to note is on the back side where this mounts to the intake tube you should have a o-ring, a plastic o-ring on the outside and then right inside of that there should be a rubber o-ring and that's what actually seals this. So once you get those on there just hand tighten those screws. I like to just use a little hand driver but yeah run those in just snug them up not too tight and then we'll go ahead and get the top cover back on and we can take this over and hook it up to the hose hopefully this thing will crank right up for us all right well i just got the hose all hooked up and i've been working on just purging the air out i'm just gonna grab a uh this white 40 degree tip put that in just to make sure everything's gonna work that's locked in all right, so we are on. There is no choke. It's got the auto choke system. And here we go. I'm going to try to release the pressure at the same time.
runs like a champ first pull just want to make sure we've got nothing crazy going on this uh hose did seem to be dripping a little bit but i might not got it all the way tight that was the o-ring i had lubed up um it's a problem with a lot of these too you know some of that stuff gets dry rotted but worst case if it continues to leak you just get a new o-ring for it but yeah that's that's great right there easy peasy i say that but y'all know they're not easy they're not all easy i should say but yeah so hopefully this helps you guys if y'all have uh, Husqvarna or a similar pressure washer with one of these Briggs and Stratton's um, this is the 875 but the carburetor on this is the same on a lot of these pressure washers a lot of push mowers most of the new modern Briggs and Stratton stuff so um, this can apply to a lot but I really appreciate y'all tuning in and hopefully this can help somebody out I know uh, my neighbor will be happy to have a new pressure washer working for him so make it happen so on that note, let freedom ring, let those small engines sing. I'll see you all in the next one.